Welcome to our lecture online and here we're going to do an interesting problem with pulleys. Now before when we worked with pulleys we ignored the mass of the pulley and so we assumed that as masses went up and down as they're connected with a string going over a pulley that the pulley had no play or no say in what happens to the rest of the system. But in this case we're going to look at a more realistic system with a pulley that actually has mass. So therefore the pulley will have a moment of inertia and therefore as things begin to rotate and the masses begin to go up and down energy will be stored in the rotation of the pulley. So if a question like this comes along that says what will be the velocity of the 10 kilogram mass when it strikes the floor we have to take into account that the pulley will also have some, some play in this formula and will have some impact on the velocities of the masses. So we still start with the very same equation as before that energy initial equals energy final and so we can say that the uh, work input into the system plus the initial potential energy plus the initial kinetic energy must equal to the final potential energy plus final kinetic energy plus any heat lost in the friction. Now which of these are zero? Well let's say we set up the system we hold it in place and then we let go the moment time equals zero that means there's no work input to the system and we can set that equal to zero. Also no mention of friction was made so therefore we can assume that there's no heat loss due to friction and since everything starts from rest the system will have no kinetic energy at the very beginning so that will also be zero. So what then happens to this equation is that the initial potential energy of the system must equal the final potential energy of the system plus any kinetic energy of the system. So part of, so part of its initial potential energy went into kinetic energy the remainder stayed as potential energy. So let's define then what everything is before the system starts moving. So assuming that h equals zero is at the ground and we can see that the mass two is at the ground at the start the only potential energy is due to the height of mass one. So we can say that m1 gh is the potential energy into the system. That potential energy will cause the system to start moving and will cause m2 to go up as m1 goes down. The final potential energy when m1 strikes the ground is when m2 is at the height of m1 at the beginning of the problem so we can say that the potential energy final will be m2 gh because m1 will now be on the ground m2 will be four meters higher than it started and then the kinetic energy of the system will be wrapped up in the kinetic energy of m1 plus the kinetic kinetic energy of m2 plus the kinetic energy stored in the rotation of the pulley so that will then be plus one half m1 v squared whatever the velocity was of that mass when it strikes the ground which is by the way what we are trying to find right what is the velocity of the 10 kilogram mass so v equals question mark that's the velocity we're looking for of course m2 will be moving up at that same velocity so that also has kinetic energy one half m2 v squared the velocities of course will be equal and then finally we have kinetic energy in the rotation of the wheel and so that would be plus one half i omega squared that is the rotational form of the kinetic energy which the pulley will have. Now remember since this is a pulley and we can assume that it's a solid disk that the i will be equal to one half m of the pulley omega squared oh not omega squared I'm getting ahead of myself is mass of the pulley times the radius squared that's the moment of inertia of the pulley and then relating omega to velocity we know that the tangential velocity along the pulley will be equal to r times omega or omega will be equal to v over r so replacing omega by v over r replacing i by one half mp r squared this equation now becomes m1 gh equals m2 gh plus one half m1 v squared plus one half m2 v squared plus one half times instead of i we're going to write one half mass of the pulley times the radius of the pulley squared okay that's the moment of inertia pulley times omega squared which is v squared over r like that 
And now right away we can see that this r squared cancels out this r because this r will be squared as well. And now simplifying things a little bit more, we can say that m1gh equals m2gh plus one half m1v squared plus one half m2 v squared and then plus one quarter the mass of the pulley times v squared and ultimately remember we are looking for v squared so this term has a v squared in it that term has a v squared in it that term has a v squared in it we now have to somehow isolate v squared we can do that by moving the m2gh to the other side of the equation and factoring out a v squared from the right side of the equation so then what we get here is m1 gh minus m2 gh equals v squared times one half m1 plus one half m2 plus one quarter the mass of the pulley like so I can then factor out a gh out of the left side equation divide both sides by what's in the brackets so we can isolate and then I flip the equation around so I can say v squared is equal to what I have on the left side with gh factored out, so gh times m1 minus m2 divided by everything that's in the brackets which would be one half m1 plus one half m2 plus one quarter m of the pulley. And now I'm ready to go ahead and solve for v, realizing of course if I take the square root of both sides I will know the velocity of the mass when it strikes the floor. All right, plug in the numbers. This is equal to the square root of g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. Multiply times h, and it started at a height of 4 meters. And multiply times the difference between the two masses of 10 kilograms minus 5 kilograms. So 10 kilograms minus 5 kilograms. Okay, that's the numerator. And I divide the whole thing by half mass 1 plus half mass 2 plus 1 quarter the mass of the pulley. So that would be 1 half times... Uh, 10 kilograms plus one half times five kilograms plus one quarter times uh, let's see here two kilograms and what do we get I guess before we um, work that out so this will be equal to the square root of that would be 9.8 make it a little bit bigger 9.8 times 4 times 5 in the numerator. In the denominator, we have half a 10, that's 5, half a half, a half a 5, that's 2.5, that's 7.5, and, and a quarter of that would be another half, that would be 8, so divided by 8. And then, of course, the 4 and the 8, that goes 1, that becomes 2, and that becomes a relatively easy thing to fall. And that would be meters per second, of course, because we're dealing with velocities. Just makes it a little bit easier to work this out in a calculator. And so we have 9.8 times 5 divided by 2 and take the square root and we get 4.95 meters per second so v equals 4.95 meters per second and there you go now of course the actual number and the answer isn't as important as long as we understand what we were doing so let's quickly repeat what we're doing we have a pulley system we have a heavy mass and a small mass the small mass on the ground the heavy mass is in the air and we let things go the pulley, of course, has mass, and if it has mass, it has a moment of inertia. So as things begin to move, we can assume that the initial energy that the system had, with the big mass being up here, equals the final energy that the system has with the big mass on the floor and the little mass up here, and everything moving just before the big mass strikes the floor, which means that the initial M1GH, the only energy that the system had when the big mass was up in the air, equals the total energy that the system has, which comes from the potential energy that the small mass has when it's in the air, M2GH, plus the kinetic energy of the moving big block, the moving small block, and the rotating wheel. The moving big block plus the moving small block plus the rotating wheel. Then, of course, you realize that I can be expressed as one-half mR squared because we think of it as a solid disk, and then we can also replace omega squared by V over R squared. That's the equivalent of the rotational velocity. Then eventually we see then in this case we have three terms that have the velocity term in there, the velocity component in there, then we isolate the velocity and plug in the numbers. And that's how you do a problem like that.